Phased ban of gambling advertisements during sports matches within three years is a key recommendation of a parliamentary committee examining gambling harms and regulation of the sector. The report also makes the case for greater federal government oversight to tackle what's being described as an addiction crisis. Joining us to discuss more on this is the Labor MP and Parliamentary Committee Chair, Peter Murphy. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. We know that this issue of gambling ads on TV and during sporting matches is a, a complex problem. Uh, the size of the debate is essentially on one side, the, the TV uh, broadcasters, the sporting organisations are saying we need this funding. On the other side, there's the harms that, that your uh, committee has uncovered in terms of the impact that's having on, on especially young people as well, as I read it. What have you decided to do in terms of broadcast advertising on TV? What's the key recommendation there? Um, thank you. Thank you for having me on. And you're right, there, there is that uh, tension, I guess, between sporting codes and broadcasters relying on money from gambling companies and the harm, the evidence of the harm that Australians are experiencing. Do you know that not only do Australians bet more than any per capita than any other country in the world, we lose more and we lose more betting online per capita than any other country in the world. And added to that is the, I think, extraordinary concern of parents that we are producing a generation of young Australians that intrinsically see sport and gambling as linked and are losing the ability to enjoy sport outside of gambling. So what the uh, House of Representatives Social Policy and Legal Affairs Committee, which I'm privileged to chair, has done is recommend uh, 31 reforms. Uh, after a very comprehensive inquiry that started in September of last year, the report came out today, starting with an overarching national harm reduction strategy that takes a public health approach that has a national regulator, a national ombudsman, and including a raft of other reforms in there to either stop harm before it starts or help to recover from harm, including a comprehensive staged move over three years to a ban on all advertising for online gambling. OK, so how will that work in a practical sense? Because we know that many sports broadcasting deals are nutted out years in advance. They would have already been agreed to uh, beyond that proposed three-year advertising phase-out period. The risk here that broadcasters are saying is that sports broadcasts could be cut as an unintended outcome. Yeah. Did your committee come up with any answers as to how to, yeah. how to deal with that? Uh, absolutely. And there's a few answers to that. The first is that... We were anxious and eager to make sure that broadcasters and sporting organisations and bookmakers got to give evidence, so we heard from them um, about what their views are and the circumstances are. Um, the other thing I would say is, why is it that broadcasters say if they lost some or all of the revenue they currently get from sports betting advertising that they would have to cut free-to-air sport? Why not something else? Why is it free to air sport? As far as we could see on the committee, all that is doing is solidifying the link that Australian parents don't want between gambling and sport. It does not have to be linked in that way. It's also, thirdly, the reason why we recommended a comprehensive phased ban. We understand that there will be implications for broadcasters and um, sporting groups and bookmakers, but they're not insurmountable. And we um, have recommended that a government take a reasonable, rational, phased approach to unwinding some of those contracts, to looking for replacement of some of not all of the advertising revenue for those organisations, and in the end, to make a decision to prioritise public health and the wellbeing of Australians over and addiction to revenue from gambling companies. You mentioned before the, the stats around Australians in terms of how much we gamble compared to overseas. Are you worried that with this crackdown here that we'll simply turn to, to other markets, illegal offshore markets, to, to get that betting fix if we do see it crack down on here? That was a concern that was raised during our hearings and we did interrogate that. 
um, there is very little, very little evidence from across the world where they have stricter regulation of online betting, that that leads to a significant or indeed very much at all moved to illegal offshore betting. Um, there is very little. What, so what, but what we've also recommended as part of the 31 comprehensive recommendations um, is that the Australian government task um, ACMA, the Australian Communications and Media Authority, to take even more um, proactive and stringent action against illegal offshore um, bookmakers to protect Australians from that. Um, so whilst, yes, there will always be people who will seek out other ways um, of betting, again, we don't believe it's an insurmountable hurdle and we believe it's something that should be done for the greater good. Peter Murphy, appreciate you joining us to, to talk us through the recommendations. Now, obviously, it's over to the government to see if they decide to adopt those in full or not. We'll uh, be watching closely to see what happens next. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much uh, for having me. And on behalf of the Cross-Party Committee, uh, thank you for shining a light on um, our important report.